they say timing is everything. Well, that's all I have time for today. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Chalk Talk. For more Chalk Talks, what? Oh, not time for that part yet? Okay, dang. It looks like my timing was a bit off there. Apparently now I'm supposed to be introducing today's topic. I wish they would tell me these things. If you're doing an FPGA design, you have to worry about timing too. And unlike the Chalk Talk production studio, guys, <clears throat> you have to tell the design tools what timing you expect by creating timing constraints. If you've done this before, you probably know that creating and managing those constraints can kind of be a pain in the neck or a really big pain in the neck. <laughs> Luckily, Xilinx knows that too, and they're bringing us some help. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Today, my guest is Ron Plyler from Xilinx, and we're going to discuss static timing constraints and analysis in Xilinx's Vivado. Before we get started, remember to click that link. There you can check out a tech packet that has more information about this Chalk Talk. There you can watch a quick take video called Using the Vivado Timing Constraint Wizard and download a free white paper called Ultra Fast Design Methodology Guide for the Vivado Design Suite. Hi, Ron. Thank you so much for joining me again today. Thanks, Amelia. Great to be here. So everybody kind of hates timing analysis, right? We all just wish timing just worked. But since we don't live in that world, let's talk about how Vivado makes our timing analysis world just a little bit of a happier place. Sure. One of the key pieces of accelerating design in Vivado is a static time analysis engine. Okay. By working with a shared scalable data model, the Static Time Analysis Engine provides ASIC strength capabilities to the Vivado design suite. Here are a few highlights. It's built to handle designs with sizes in the millions of LUTs. Okay. It's multi-threaded for high performance. And to be flexible and intuitive, it uses the industry standard Synopsys Design Constraint Format, also known as SDC. Okay. In Vivado, we've added some Xilinx-centric extensions to SDC, which results in XDC, a superset. Okay. And to top it off, XDC is a subset of the Vivado Tickle language, which makes constraining a design fully scriptable. All right. Also, unlike a standalone timer, the Vivado static timing analysis engine is completely integrated in the tool flow, so you interactively develop and analyze constraints at any design stage, and the shared data model provides more accurate timing as you progress in the flow. This is useful for refining constraints early in the flow where performance is best and your changes have the most impact. Ah, okay. So... Ron, with all this advanced technology, are we all set? All ready to churn out those multi-million LUT designs? Not quite. We still need to project the timing requirements in the form of XDC constraints and apply them to tell the tools where to focus their efforts. Ah, okay. Vivado is timing-driven, so synthesis and place and route are all guided by the timing engine. There are some common pitfalls when constraining a design. Missing constraints. Many times we fail to correctly identify that certain paths are critical, and when we do, the tools will focus elsewhere. The result is that sometimes the hardware will fail due to timing violations. Sure. Incorrect constraints. These are just as bad because we tell the tools to specifically focus on the wrong parts of the design. Right. A good example is when you have multiple clocks with paths going between them, clock domain crossings. Those are considered valid timing paths. That's how SDC defines the default behavior. So we need to decide if the paths are false and constrain them, otherwise we might end up with impossible to meet timing requirements not just for setup, but for hold. Okay. And if we have any unreasonable hold requirements, the tools will try to meet those first, which usually means that setup requirements will be sacrificed. This is because the design will still function at a slower speed, but will not function at all if there are hold violations. And all this adds up to the possibility of failure. It certainly does. So what can we do to try to stay out of trouble? Well, to keep us on the right path to avoid these pitfalls, there are some guidelines as part of the ultra-fast design methodology. Okay. The ultra-fast design methodology was developed after realizing that one can't be successful with just Vivado by itself. Methodology is just as important as the design software. The two can go hand in hand. Now, we won't have time to cover all of the ultra-fast design methodology guidelines, but just remember this one subliminal message. Okay. UG949, the ultra-fast design methodology user guide. You can download the latest edition from Xilinx.com. Adopting this methodology can give an almost 10x improvement to productivity gain to your project. Oh yeah, Ron, I see that subliminal message there. 
<laughs> okay, now back to the four key steps. First is creating clocks, usually just the clocks being driven into the device. The constraints for divided and phase shifted clocks generated using clock generation blocks like MMCMs and PLLs are just automatically derived by the tools. Okay. We may need to manually add constraints for user generated clocks. Then we need to constrain interactions between clocks, the clock domain crossings. Then come the input and output delays, and finally timing exceptions like false paths. And we shouldn't try to overdo it with exceptions. We need to be careful not to exclude real paths and keep in mind the more exceptions we add, the more load we put on the timer. Sure. Validating constraints is also important. We want to get feedback that what we're putting into the timer is correct and reasonable. Each XDC constraint has some corresponding tickle command to report back the results of the constraint. And it's best to debug constraint issues after synthesis, before place and route. There's no sense wasting time running place and route with bad constraints. All right, Ron, let's see some of these guidelines in action. Okay, let's take a look at a simple example of the first step, creating clocks. Great. To do this, we use the XDC constraint create clock, give the clock period, and attach it to the input port called sysclock. Sure. One of the advantages of having this interactive timing engine in Vivado is that we can get instant feedback on the constraints. Cool, okay. The tickle command report clocks will report the clock that was just created along with the derived generated clocks. And we can see sysclock goes into a PLL, which drives out the diskewed version along with the 4x version. It's a useful way to validate constraints. Okay. Other useful commands to validate constraints throughout the flow include check timing, which can identify missing constraints, report timing and report timing summary to identify and analyze critical paths, and write XDC, which saves the current set of constraints into a file. Okay, cool. One feature that may help us create clocks is the clock networks report. This shows us the complete topology of the design's clock network. We can see how clocks propagate through the design, and it helps us understand where clocks are generated from MMCMs and PLLs. Okay, so one of the things that's always a pain for me is constraints. It's always hard to get them set up, and uh, what are some other similar features that can help us, I mean, me, <laughs> set up constraints? There are many helpful features built around the Vivado Static Timing Analyzer that you won't find in other tools. For example, once we constrain clocks, we need to check how they interact. Here the clock interactions report shows all the timing paths between different clocks in a matrix format. Cool. Between each pair of clocks, there's a color-coded square that tells the status of their interaction. Black means no paths, green means properly timed, and other colors like orange and red need attention. Okay. This orange square means partial false path, unsafe. And why is it considered unsafe? This column says there's no common primary clock, or in other words, no common source. Ah. So the clocks are likely asynchronous, but there are timing paths between them. Okay. From within the report, we can report timing to see the timing paths, or if we know what we want, we can choose to set clock groups or other exceptions to make sure the CDC is properly constrained. I see. As we start adding more and more constraints, we need a good way to stay organized. Yeah. The timing constraints editor window serves as a dashboard for all the constraints in the design. Once we start building clock groups and timing exceptions, and we have constraints from different files, we might actually start to get conflicts between the constraints themselves. Ah. Here we see all the constraints in the order they are applied and according to the XDC file where they originated. This is particularly useful for finding constraints from IP. Each IP in a design comes with its own set of constraints in an XDC file or set of files, and the constraints are scoped to the IP instance. Mm. Okay. We can also browse constraints using a navigator and... On the right hand side here, you can add or modify constraints from within the window. So the time constraints editor window is yet another way to make sure a design is well covered. Very cool. So we've talked about constraints or the stuff going into the static timing analyzer. And what about the stuff that comes out? Yes, report timing summary is a recommended analysis command for running static timing analysis and generating results. Okay. Report timing summary automatically analyzes all the groups of timing constraints for setup and hold requirements and reports the critical paths and their worst negative slacks, or WNS. It even adds the results of the check timing command to remind us of constraint coverage. It performs a very comprehensive analysis and gives us a good summary of the timing results. We can run report timing summary in the IDE by clicking on this toolbar icon that looks like a stopwatch or a timer. Okay. And when we do this, it sort of brings to life many powerful analysis features. Cool. The report transforms into a critical path browser, and the left-hand side becomes the path browser where we can navigate the different timing groups. Click on the critical path in the timing summary. Okay. 
And now we get multiple views of the critical paths. Ah. On the bottom left, we can see the path groups with the violations and the WNS numbers in red. Bottom right shows a list of critical paths sorted by timing slack with the worst on top. Double clicking on a path opens a detailed timing report above. This is similar information as a text report, except many parts of the report are hyperlinks for cross probing. Ah, okay. And here's what happens when you select a path in the timing summary. If we go to the device view, we can see the placement of the critical path and routing if it exists. And this lets us visualize instantly whether the problem is due to placement or other physical constraints. And maybe we need to apply some floor planning. Mm, okay. We can also generate a critical path schematic. Sometimes the logical view gives insight into how to fix timing problems. So the IDE version of the timing summary report really gives us that extra visual dimension of the timing results. Very nice. For deep dive analysis into problem areas, there is the report timing command. Similar to report timing analysis, report timing analyzes the design against constraints and reports critical paths. The difference is that report timing has many more options for detailed analysis, like for example specific start points and end points and number of paths. We end up with a nice detailed description of the timing paths with a cell and net delay accumulating for the clock paths and the data paths. Very cool. So, Ron, what if we're completely new to SDC or XDC? Are there other ways to help us get started? Good question. We might know what we want to constrain, but we're not sure how to do it in XDC. Right. The XDC language templates in Vivado have all the commonly used constraints, along with the comment descriptions, in some cases even ASCII art style waveforms to help us understand the timing parameters involved. Cool. So if we're starting from scratch, or maybe we forgot the syntax, or we need some examples, the set of XDC language templates is a good place to start. Awesome. Just browse for the type of constraint, then copy and paste the example in the template, into the XDC file, or into the Tickle console when developing your constraints interactively. Very nice. So this is like having an XDC library, right? Yes, it is. And actually, we've tried to make it even easier to set up constraints. Cool, okay. The Timing Constraints Wizard is a new feature in the 2014.1 Vivado release. The wizard brings even more automation into setting up constraints and making sure they are complete. And it is not only useful for guiding novices, but also good for validating constraints for expert users. There are existing materials on the Time Constraints Wizard, and there is a new quick take video on Xilinx.com. Excellent! But a very good way to find out more is to actually use it in the new 2014.1 release. The wizard really deserves its own stage, so I'm not really going to say much more about it other than try it out if you have the latest software. Excellent, Ron. We've talked about quite a lot of cool stuff today. Uh, can you recap just a tad for me? Sure. Remember that the Vivado Static Timing Engine is one of the key enablers for today's large, complex, multi-million LUT designs. But powerful tools by themselves are not sufficient to get things done. You need the right methodology as well. Yeah. And there are many useful features surrounding the Timing Engine to help keep us aligned with the proper methodology and help ensure successful design. Excellent. I think I'm ready to get started. Where should I go for more information? Well, remember there is always more to see at www.xilinx.com, including quick take videos like the one on the new timing constraints wizard, documentation on constraints, design analysis, timing closure techniques, and of course UG949, the ultra fast design methodology guide. Also, the Xilinx user community forums is a good place where you browse topics of interest, share ideas with other Vivado users, and get help from Vivado experts. Excellent. How could I forget UG949? <laughs> well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Ron. It's always a pleasure speaking with you. Okay, thank you, Amelia. Before we go, I want to remind everyone to click that link. There you can download a free tech packet that has more information about this Chalk Talk. There you can watch a quick take video called Using the Vivado Timing Constraint Wizard and download a free white paper called Ultra Fast Design Methodology Guide for the Vivado Design Suite. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton. For more Chalk Talks, check out the EE Journal YouTube channel or the on-demand section of eejournal.com.